a very rudimentary drawing. Okay, so we've got the we've got the boat here in the kind of in the middle lift, sort of slightly to the right. Um, I've done a little bit of a drawing of the house in the background, some of the stanchions that are holding the boat up, some odd little shapes over here, not really sure what they are, but they're just some shapes. And then the other thing that I've done, if you're going to be using gum Arabic, if you're going to have a go at that, is I've just applied a, um, a flat um, uh, kind of application of the gum Arabic over the, over the outside, around the boat, um, around the house, um, and up into the trees a little bit. Okay, so that's all I've done so far. I only did that first because obviously I needed to be dry before we start painting. Mm -hmm. So, well, Stuart, can you just say, uh, did you go over the house? You went round the boat, didn't put it so on the boat. The only bit that's not got any gum Arabic on is just this little bit of the boat there, which is completely white. Oh, yes. And there's a little bit, well, I missed a bit there, but it's, it's whitish there. So everything else has pretty much got gum Arabic over it. Well, do you mm. apply your gum Arabic with a brush? Yeah, just a, just a standard watercolour brush is fine. And it washes out all right, does it? It washes out fine, yeah. And then yeah. You can use gum Arabic. So if you don't have gum Arabic, now what this chap has done actually in this painting, he's painted it on what's called yuppo paper, which is a very smooth um, yeah. uh, kind of a, a sheen over the paper. So that's why the paint has got those sort of very um, characteristic smooth mark so that's why i thought we could do it with some gum arabic but if you don't have the gum arabic then possibly what you could do is um you could use some gesso um let me show you so when you use gesso first i don't know if you can see this little this little one here yeah. um when you apply the gesso wet and then you put your watercolor marks into it you get these sort of these these characteristic type marks which are not exactly the same as um what he's done some of them are um, but you'll get that more mark makey uh, kind of application of the paint. Okay, so that's one way you can do it. And that that has the gesso has to be wet when you put it on to do that. Okay, so you can lay some gesso in an area, and while the gesso is still moist, then you can bring your watercolor into it. But if you are going to do that, then just make sure you wash your brush out really well after using um, over the top of the gesso. Okay, you don't want to get too much gesso in your brush. You want to wash that out. Um, the other way you could do it is um, you can uh, use a smoother paper. So you can use a hot press paper, um, which would give you a bit more of that um, mark making application. Or the other way you can do it is not worry at all about the, um, let me show you, not worry at all about the actual paper type, but we do it more in a layering fashion. I don't know if you can see here, but this is more where we're just layering the colors down. Okay, so perhaps I'm going to do that anyway when we paint, but just when we come to maybe um, applying some of the text, you might find that a little bit more difficult, but you'll definitely be able to do everything else that we're going to do. Okay, yeah. he's kind of used the sort of a palish bluey green there. So I'm going to take some cerulean. Um, so some cerulean blue and we'll have um, a tiny bit of English red in that, just to make it a little bit less blue. It's got a slightly greenish tinge, a gray tinge to it. Okay, now what I'm not really after here is a really smooth application of paint. I don't mind if I get a few edges or um, a bit of a bit of lininess. So let's start up here and I'm gonna block in the top part of this sky kind of coming down. I might leave a few little gaps in it, perhaps. A bit more paint. So coming down. So I've got a mast here, so I'm not actually going to paint that mast. I'm going to come in either side of it. Oh, just gone over it, he says, so I might have to lift that out. <laughs> so let's carry on down. A bit more blue. <clears throat> So to get a bit of variety into this sky, I'm actually putting a little bit, either a little bit more blue or a little bit more um, of the English red into the mix to give me some variety in, in the wash. So it's not just one even wash. Um, just so it's a little bit more broken, the color. So as we come down to the tree line, 
I'm actually into the gum arabic here now and it's kind of it's making the paint go a little bit thicker a bit more pliable okay good right now off with some trees so for the tree color I'm going to go with some um let's see uh I've got a nice sort of dark turquoisey blue here so I'm going to use this first with a tiny, tiny little bit of yellow in it, not much, and a tiny, tiny bit of um, the English red, just to um, knock a little bit of the greenness out of it. So we're going to start, actually it's coming from this side while that's drying. So I'm going to start to pick out the top of the house and just laying the marks down. I'm not, I don't want to start to blend them or, or try and make them too, um, you know, the edges are not su such an important thing within this technique. And it's actually the edges that give us some of the, um, the character within the painting. So I'm just laying the paint down in strokes. And then I'm going to apply some other pieces of color to this in a second as well. So there's the top of my house. Going round, kind of going round this mast that's coming up from somewhere, I'm not really sure where, but somewhere in the background there. So we'll apply a bit more of this coming over here. Bit more paint. So coming down and then at the top of the roof over here. And then coming back onto the other side. So the beauty of having this, or the nice thing about having the gum Arabic there is that when I go and lay more color into that, it will react with the color that's underneath. So you can actually blend and I'm actually already getting some nice little holes and a bit of a bit of texture in there already. Um, okay, so let's darken that up slightly now. So a bit more of the blue or the turquoise. And I'm going to put some a little bit of ultramarine just to warm the blue up a bit. And a tiny bit of burnt sienna. Just to go darker. So this is a darker turquoise now because <clears throat> we've actually got some quite nice dark actually it's not good quite as dark as that it's just yeah i want to bring the bring the tree line down a bit more first around the top of the apex and take that up out of the picture so we're coming down there are a lot of masts Kind of in this area and I might put those in or I might even just lift those out afterwards so I'm not really going to worry about those for the moment just going to lay these colors down like so a bit more um, depth to that color there's some more turquoise now so darker coming down just break up this area and we actually get the corner of the roof just there and then we're almost down to the down to the top of the boat then okay let's change that color I'm now going to go into some like brick red, bit of orange, bit of burnt sienna, and try and make the the, the paint about the same consistency as the colour that I've put on. <clears throat> so this is a much warmer colour now. 
So this is sort of a brown, browny orange. So I'm going to use this a little bit along the roof line of the of the cabin. Now work that up into some of these colors. In the tree. Or trees, I should say. There's a bit up here as it kind of goes on up. We've got some of that orange actually in the, this, I don't know what it is, like an awning or a canopy of porch from the house. So we'll put that in. You can also use the same color up in the, in the roof line. So just put some up, up here. Coming down the slope. All the way to the bottom edge. And then this part of the roof is a bit lighter. So I'm gonna put some more water in this and a bit of yellow. So let's get this part of the roof in. I think there's actually sort of a bluey shadow is placed over the, um, the gutter or that area there. So I'll probably leave that and bring that in afterwards. Um, and then we've got some of this paler color on this wall. So let's bring some of that down. <clears throat> so we can come right the way down to, to these shapes. So I'm gonna go a bit warmer again. <clears throat> slightly more golden. <clears throat> Down at this level. And then behind this mast. Coming all the way across the top of this, whatever it is, box or bit of um, harbour paraphernalia. I put a little bit of that on this guttering edge. Just up there. <clears throat> and then we can use the same goldeny color now into um, some of these areas. So I have a little bit of that in here, which might be a boy or or some something like that on the on the boat. Okay, change the colour back to the turquoise again. I'm gonna put a little bit of Payne's grey in that just to darken it slightly. That's way too much Payne's grey. Let's just dilute that. I want a bit of a bit of grey. I don't want it too grey. So now I'm gonna come underneath my um, porch here. And then I can carve in around the back of the, the cab. And bring this sort of darkish color down just to help this, this area to stand out more than anything. Um, okay. And then we've actually got some windows. So I'm just going to indicate where those are. So there's one there. There's one here. Just trying to make sure that the this angle of the bottom of the window 
um, replicates the angle of the roof line. So it can't be more steep than it. It could be a little bit less steep, but not more steep. Otherwise it won't look like it's going into the, into the distance. So that's a few windows there. Perhaps put a bit of that gray in here for the front windows. I'm gonna put the whole square shape in because there's actually what looks like some bits and pieces inside the cab. So we don't need to paint the whole shape gray. But again, this top edge, we need to kind of replicate the angle of the pitch of the roof. I'm gonna clean my brush off. Okay, now I'm gonna get some colors into this part of the, the building. Um, so I'm gonna take the, the turquoisey gray color I've just been using and put it into the warm orangey colors that we mixed up earlier. So all I've done there is I've taken this color and mixed it with this color but put more water in it. And I might even put a little bit of cerulean in there just to blue it up slightly. So it's, a, it's sort of a bluey gray is really what you want. A quite a light blue gray. So then I'm just gonna try and start to establish the underside of this um, part of the roof. So then that kind of comes down there. And then we've got this shadow that's being cast all the way across and then down. And then it's creating these shadow shapes on the um, on the building itself. Maybe there's some masks or something creating those shadows. We don't really know. Fine, and then a little bit more of that same shadow color. And I'm gonna use that in under here. So under the porch, and that kind of comes down and then it creates this shadow shape out into the building, which doesn't really make a lot of sense when you consider that the light's coming from this way, but hey, that's what he's done, so that's what we're gonna do. Maybe there's some other object that we can't really see that's creating that shadow. But anyway, okay, so there's sort of like a triangle there. I don't really know what that is, but we'll leave that shape showing. And then we can continue this shadow over a bit warmer. So coming over towards this mast, can go a little bit darker, a bit more brown into those greys. Now, when you start to layer the color over the existing colors, you've really got to be careful not to play with it too much because you're just going to agitate the paint underneath because remember we've got this gum arabic thing going on over the whole whole painting so if you start to rub into or um, agitate the underpaint too much it will just lift so just be careful not to get too aggressive with it so i need some of this same dark up in the building so let's put a bit of that color in there so we'll do another um time let's have a look well two minutes two so we'll do another minute and then we'll do our minute silence so um i'm just going to put this in here and that comes down Oh, there we go. So, <clears throat> let me stop that. 
So you'll hear me go silent in a second. So if you wanna um, do the same, then by all means. So coming under there. Ultramarine and a bit of um, yellow in it. So it's slightly more green. And I'm gonna bring some of that into my tree line. So behind these masts. And obviously the actual trees themselves, if you want to do um, a conifer or something like that, then let me show you how you need to do it. Um, you want to draw a, I don't know if you can see this, you want to draw yourself um, a line or a top edge and then with a flattish brush you then want to use the corner of the brush to just tickle out from that central point and gradually getting thicker and deeper as you as you kind of come down the tree okay so if you want to put some of those in then that's how you can do it um i might have one or two over this side when we get to that far so let's carry on blocking in the back of this um area so we've got some shapes that should actually be lighter there but never mind um, we'll go a bit darker up to the edge there and then a bit more water into that same color so i'm going to use that up into this top area maybe we'll have the odd peak just poking its head over the top and then coming down a bit more cerulean, I think, now, just to edit the colour slightly. Let's put a little bit more cerulean into that same colour. And I have some of that in our boat there, or rather, I should say, in the background behind the boat. And then cutting in some of these shapes now. around this mast. And then we can carry on then liberally bring this color out and around the boat. There is actually a piece of rigging that kind of comes up that way, but I might put that in just at the end, um, probably with a bit of white, or we may even try and lift it out perhaps. Let's just put a little bit of a, oh, that one's too wet, the paper. Just a little shape poking its head up in there. Maybe another one here. Just to give an idea that they're trees rather than um, anything else. Okay, and then we'll come down the, leave a little bit of white there for the bow of the boat, the very, very front part. And then we'll come down the side and around the corner. And I'm gonna then darken up this color a little bit more again, a bit more yellow, a bit more green, make it a bit greenier. <clears throat> And then continue this across. Perhaps a few more trees poking their head up in there. A couple of dark marks here and there. 
and then we can take this right the way out of the picture on the right here. And lay actually some nice strong color in there. Okay, I'm gonna finish off blocking in this uh, right hand corner over here. And I'm going to go with um, some uh, burnt sienna and a bit of yellow in it, make it a bit more yellowy orange. So let's start to bring some of this color in just to warm up this side of the painting. And you see here now, because I've got the gum Arabic on the painting, where normally you would be worrying about obviously like an edge like that, if it was on dry paper, I can actually work this color into that edge and it will just mix together. So that's one of the nice things about this kind of work. You don't really need to worry too much about um, any edges being in the wrong place because you can move them quite easily. Um, so I'm going to go even more orangey now. As we get to the very front of the boat and then it sort of turns the corner, goes underneath like so and then over here it's quite abstract so I'm just going to just lay a few marks here and there might even just take some water and blend out some of these areas just using water here just to mix the color a little bit so not too much water so I'm kind of blotting off a reasonable about amount and just using sort of a dampish brush so that I can blend some of these areas together a little bit and it's only because of the gum arabic that it's allowing me to do that because you remember the gum arabic is almost like the medium that the paint suspended in so <clears throat> um, it buys you time it allows you to sort of move the colour after it's gone on. So then let's just soften that a little, a little bit more so it's a nice misty area. Um, that's got a bit heavy so let's just lift a bit of that out. Okay now let's look at the um, this bottom area. So I'm just going to soften these off. <clears throat> so they evaporate, just using a bit of water. Okay, so some blues again then, or bluey greys. <clears throat> some cerulean in that. So we're actually using very, very limited colours here. We're not using that many colours. Um, and I'm going to start off by bringing it Maybe not quite as strong as that. A bit more water. So underside of the hull. So that comes back and then we've got this sort of support beam then there. Now remember the boat bottom is going to start to go uphill. Okay, even though it's not drawn in, you need to be it bear in mind that it's going to be going up this way rather than coming flat so just be careful of that as you're painting it um, and we can come across a bit more indicate a few more of these darker pieces of color now we're actually going to get very daring and add a different color so let's go with um sort of some red ready purple So I'm going to take some purple and a bit of um, light red into it to make a sort of a crimsony 
crimsony type color. And then I'm going to start to block in now the um, the colored part of the hull with this color. And that comes all the way back. And comes forwards. And then obviously as we get nearer the bow of the boat or the front, it starts to turn, turn the corner. So here it's going uphill. And then as we come here, it starts to slowly um, curve away. And then finally it curves um, downwards. As you get right over this side, it will be going downhill. Um, and that's just because of perspective. I'm not going to explain too much about why today, but just take it from me that it does do that. So a bit of water, just to spread this, spread this out a bit and make it a little bit less thick, uh, sorry, a little bit less dark. So coming in here, uh, there was actually a white thing there. So we'll leave a gap and come in there. <clears throat> Get this color to come along. Might even bring it down below slightly. A few marks of it back here. Okay, now it's going to go darker in that purple. So I'm going to put in a nice dark blue. So that it's uh, quite a deep, a deep purple colour, bluey purple colour, and fairly dark. I'm going to bring that, let's just tilt this down a little bit, I've got quite a bit of glare on the screen. So we've got some nice dark shapes. And I'm not really trying to figure out what they are. I'm just going to try and actually paint just the shapes. So there's some like oblongs here. There's a gap. And then there's another oblong there. And then there's sort of a, a splodge and then a dash. And then over here, we've got some darker bits. bit under there, some more darks over here. <clears throat> Maybe a little bit dark around the front. And then we've got a few dark bits right at the back of the boat, and this will help to make the the very back of the boat um, stand out a little bit more, show us where the end is. There's a door in here somewhere. So we'll put that in. I think there's a window, some sort of window shape there. We can actually darken up these areas a bit more. Make them a bit darker. That means you go darker still yet, but for the moment that's fine. Bring some of this dark in and around these shapes. So there's lots of like, I think posts and uprights in that area. And then we need to go back to our warmer colors again. Into the goldeny colours that we used over here. I'm going to bring some of those in here. <clears throat> I'm 
This is a little bit along there. Can have some of these golden colours in the building. It's too strong. Let's go a bit, a bit more water. A bit of warmth in the building there. Maybe glaze a little bit into there as well. And there's a little bit up in the roof line there. Okay, and then we can continue these warms down into this left hand corner. Again, maybe leave some odd shapes to indicate bits of old posts or um, bits of boat kicking around the boat yard. Different bits and pieces. And again, it doesn't really need to make sense this part down here. We just need some colours on and then we can let it bleed. So let's go back into our green greys. Put some of these in. And that's a post in there. A bit darker. Much darker. Let's go purpley. Put a bit of purple into that. Uh, clean the brush. And then back into our golden colours. Sort of coming across the front of the front of the boat. Let's just bring that down a bit lower. A bit more yellow. A bit of yellow across this area. And then maybe indicating that there's some, some, I don't know what they are, like slabs or something that could show that there's a bank of some description there. Maybe they're rocks or Imagining this is maybe like a slipway or something. So we're starting to look at getting a bit more detail. We're going to put the um, little bit of this area down here back in, get some more shadows on the boat, and then probably a few more stronger darks just to sort of tie the whole thing together. So that's the strategy or the plan, as I should say. So the first thing then will be to um, populate some colour down in here. So we're going to use some of the goldeny colours. So some of these colours we used here, fairly fairly watery. So I'm putting plenty of water in there, so I don't want it too strong. And I'm imagining there's sort of a track or a, um, a rail kind of coming down this in this direction. So I'm going to bring my colour out from the boat and the rail is going to come along in this sort of direction. Um, and maybe we'll bring it downhill slightly. So we'll start to curve it. So let's curve it down to a corner of the, um, the painting. Put a bit of darker color in there as well. So just indicate maybe it's coming downhill. <clears throat> so 
something like that. And then maybe a bit more of the burnt sienna to show up this side. So I'm leaving a little bit of white in there just to show that that's the edge of the, um, the track. A bit more um, goldeny color in there. So we we'll make this sort of into a into a bank, I think, or something like that. And then I need just a couple of little bits of a couple of marks on this this side to show up this side of the bank, uh, the the rail. So we'll just come in like so. And maybe a bit there, perhaps a little bit there. And a bigger one, perhaps here. Okay, so that will do that and we'll leave that alone now to just sort itself out. Now in the boat itself, I need to clean my palette off because I want some clean shadow colours. I'm just cleaning out the palette. So I'm going to use ultramarine. It's quite a clean, clean blue for my shadows. So then I'm going to take some ultramarine and put a tiny bit of um, the English red in it just to purple it up ever so slightly. Okay, and then plenty of water. And then I can start to then look to get some shadow on these, on the hull. Might come a little bit lighter than that, a bit more water. So the back of the boat comes up here. And then we're kind of coming down like that. And then we've got some shadow being cast across. Perhaps there's a bit more shadow here. And then we've got a bit of shadow coming down the, the hole. Now, if I curve that and then bring it down, it will give an indication that the hull is slightly curved there. A couple of marks coming down like so. I'm going to link those together. And then it's a bit of a darker edge there. And then again, another bit of shadow on the front of the boat just to show up that bow. Perhaps a tiny, tiny little bit of shadow coming down and away. And then we can use some of this blue into, perhaps there's some pads on those um, support beams. And then maybe we'll have a little bit of shadow in some of these areas, just to knock down the white a little bit. <clears throat> some shadowy bits over here. And then into the, um, into the building itself, we'll bring some of this blue. <clears throat> so we'll just blew up the shadow a little bit that we've already got here. making it a touch darker and bluer. And the other thing at the same time, if I put this little window in, in the front of the building, <clears throat> so that it just sort of looms out of the shadow.
taking that down a bit further. And then on the side of the, um, the cabin, it's bluer. So we'll put that in. So we come up to the window and then the front of the cab, underneath the um, <clears throat> the roof line. And then we'll do the same, just put a little bit of shadow along that front edge of the cabin, making sure it's going downhill to the right, <clears throat> as we've discussed. Perhaps there's a few bits of detail coming up. <clears throat> now, I'm going to go darker again now. So let's go for a really dark purple. So I'm going to take some purple and some blue together to make quite a rich dark colour. Fairly thick as well, I don't want it too thin. And then I'm going to apply this now in some of my shadowy areas to make them a bit stronger. <clears throat> so a bit more shadow, perhaps on the boat here. Have a bit more depth in the the doorway. Some real strong darks up in here. Maybe we'll even, I know it's not exactly like this, but I'll bring a few darker bits just up into the building there just to help the the edge of the boat to shove off a bit stronger. Um, and we can even darken up some of these trees as well, make them a bit richer. <clears throat> Around the edge of the house. A few dark marks there. which will also help the, the cabin to show off a bit stronger. I'm just going to merge those a little bit, just tap them, just to break it up a tiny bit. <clears throat> okay, now let's try and put in some of our, actually, before I do that, I need to finish off that little area. <clears throat> so I'm going to put that in in a, a brown, purpley brown colour. Just a few darker bits. <clears throat> Just underneath the the hole here. just to make it a bit more obvious that it's going in that direction. Perhaps a couple over here. And then a touch of dark in the foreground. Not sure why, they just feel like it needs it. Okay, now let's get some of the um, 
lighter rigging bits on. I might even try this with some white first, just some white acrylic. Uh, white watercolour, sorry, I should say. Just straight out of the tube. So I'm just going to dunk it straight in there. Just get a bit of white on the on the brush. And then we can actually try to, I won't go for the very fine ones just yet. Just going to shore up some of the actual bigger masts first. Then maybe if I feel brave, I'll try and put one of those in. Uh, and then we've got a lot of very fine bits of mast and rigging. Kind of up here. Uh, I can actually put a little bit of white just back into the windows here. Perhaps a tiny bit on that bow, just to make that stand out a bit stronger. And then I might also just detail up some posts. Just to emphasize this idea of the um, shipyard type thing of all the bits of wood and um, support beams and so on and so forth. Just make these a bit stronger. Perhaps even make this one have a pad. Make this mast up here a bit stronger. Yeah, I'm going to put a few bits of darker, stronger red. Might even go for a bit of cad red, I think, just to brighten it up a touch more. So just dunking the brush straight into some red. And I might use this just to make the hull of the boat a little bit more obvious. I know it's not strictly like this on the um, reference, but we're making it our own now. A little bit stronger there. Just to make the drawing a bit more positive. have a few red spots up on the top of the cabin. There's a bit of red in the background here. A few bits just back here. that off and then I think I'll use a bit of um, turquoise again fairly neat and then use that to bring in some 
shapes, little bits of color, just in places. to make the drawing a bit stronger. Perhaps a little bit along the um, edge of the house, not too much. A little bit in the window, a few spots in the doorway, perhaps the old window on this side. Just make a little bit more obvious that it is a house. I just noticed I've forgotten to put that bit of shadow in, so let's just do that quickly. A little bit of cerulean. And the um, purple together. So a bit of shadow on this corner of the house. under the eaves. Got that same shadow in the building itself. A little bit more, I think, on this edge. Perhaps there's a something being cast across the window, the, the wall. And there's a lot of masks around, so there's, it's feasible that that could happen. <clears throat> okay, let's put the turquoise away. And then one final bit, I'm gonna take a bit of yellow, it's a nice bright yellow and bling up or put a bit more color into the some of the areas that are golden, just to add a bit more strength to those. Just a bit of yellow here and there. Just brightens the picture up a bit more. yellow back here. Okay, now I need to 
dry that all off. Looking at it, I've just got one final bit of colour just to put on. I've left some holes up there, so I'm just going to fill those in. A bit of cerulean, a bit of green, a bit of yellow, sorry. I've got a bit greener in these trees to lose this white. We don't need that. Work a bit of that green into some of these other areas so it's not isolated. few spots here and there. Perhaps a bit up here. Near the house. Okay.